Oh my god. I've been so busy making videos about how to beat the different knights that I totally forgot to make a video about the battle pass. Which means this is the first time I'm actually going to be looking at the skins and the emotes that we're going to be able to get from this season's battle pass. And that's really exciting because I've seen some really cool looking scout and minigunner skins. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, of course, my name is Harrison and of course I have two cats. If you don't know, Tower Defense Simulator updated with the Solar Eclipse event only about four days ago. This is comprised of four different knights, which you can find right here in the lobby. Only knights one and two are open. It looks like knight three is going to open up tomorrow. Perfect. But it is going to be a few days for knight four. But that's okay because it gives you plenty of time to grind shards to pick up all these super cool rewards. Dude, look at the reward for rank 12. It's the Eclipse Commander. That's a girl. We got a girl. We got another girl, Commander. Let's go. I can already hear the calls of Simp. And that's not the only cool skin in here. I've seen the scout in action and and it's very nice. <laughs> this candy throw emote is hilarious. Wait, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just go ahead and go through here. So as you can see, I have earned some of these rewards already just from playing. Oh my god, I'm already on rank four. Just to go through these real quick, I'm going to go ahead and let you know what the rewards are at the different levels. Rank one is going to get you the Eclipse Scout. Rank two is the Torchlight emote. Rank three is a Premium Crate. Rank four is the Vampire Hunter Slayer. Rank five is the Candy Throw emote, which is super funny. Rank six is the Eclipse Mortar. No way, we're actually gonna get a mortar skin this time. Rip frost mortar. Anyway, moving on. You got a deluxe crate at rank 7. The crusader minigunner at rank 8. Eclipse ranger at rank 9. The axe throwing emote that below showed off at rank 10. And finally, the eclipse accelerator at rank 11 and the eclipse commander at rank 12. What's really funny here is that it took me so long to make this video that I actually don't have to pay to win on every single rank, which did not happen for the frost invasion event or last year's Halloween event. Now sit tight while I spend my hard earned bobux on the rest of these rewards. Ouch! <laughs> that was way more expensive than it used to be. I immediately regret paying to win this time. Okay, cool. So it's automatically claiming the emotes and the crates for me. I just need to claim the rest of these skins. I'm not going to be doing a skin showcase for the skins here. I'm going to make a separate video for that. But I am going to show off the emotes because I think they're really clever. Hold on. I don't think you're going to be able to see them with people mobbing me in this lobby. Let me teleport to my happy place. <laughs> Ah, oh, much better. All right, the first emote I want to show you is the candy throw. This is probably one of the coolest emotes in the game. First of all, it's traversal, which means you can move around while you're doing it. And you just travel at this nice leisurely walking speed, which is perfect for throwing candy into people's faces. Oh, wait, maybe I do need to do this in a lobby full of people. You ain't living until you smack somebody in the face with a Snickers bar. The way the candy flies up into the air and then just kind of floats down and disappears is very cool. Now, what would take this emote to the next level is if he also smashed the candy into his face every now and then. Kind of like that one emote from Fortnite. If you think about it, it was really nice of the devs to include a Halloween-themed emote here. Since we didn't really get a Halloween event, it looks like with this emote and with the pumpkin theme on night one, that's as close as we're gonna get to Halloween this year in TDS. Wait a second, what's inside of the pumpkin? I see pieces of candy, but is that also pumpkin brains? Bro, you're supposed to hollow the pumpkin out before you use it as a bucket. He's just making the candy all sticky with pumpkin seeds. All right, now moving on to the next emote, I'm gonna show you the torchlight. All of my favorite emotes are the ones you can do while moving around, by the way. So I love how he just does a light jog while holding the torch. What's really cool about this one is that the torch actually emits light. So if you go into a dark area of the lobby, it'll actually light it up. I think the best place to do that emote is on top of the tank. Of course, you've got to glitch to the wall first. Look at how much light it's emitting. With the torch? Without the torch. With the torch? Without the torch. Yeah, this is way better. I'm even going to use it on my way into the abyss just so I don't get scared of the dark. I don't know why, but this kind of reminds me of the coffee dance emote from last year's Halloween event. I can just see it now. An entire lobby of people doing this emote following me around. All right, and the last emote I have to show you is the axe throw. And this is gonna be my least favorite because you can't move around while doing it. Oh, never mind. You kind of can. That's pretty cool. Look at me. I am Thor now. 
I wish it went further. Like if I was standing here and I did the emote, I wish it would go as far as Jax. And you could just have people on both sides of the lobby just throwing axes at one another. Ooh, you know what would be funny is if they could do some kind of a water balloon emote. And then when it hits someone, it like splashes them with blue water or something. So they change color for a second. Hold up. I need to go over to the same place that Below was standing when he leaked this emote. Yo, what's up YouTube? TDS Dev Harrison here. And I'm just gonna give you a sneak peek of this emote. All right, there you go. Don't forget, you saw it here first. That is kind of cool how he like puts it back into his backpack or <laughs> on his back or whatever he's doing, putting it back there. So in preparation for this video, I went back to my Halloween Battle Pass review from last year. And I actually said in that video that it only costs about 500 Robux to buy the entire thing. Uh, yeah, just rank 11 was 500 Robux this time. Rank 12 was 600. So at least the TDS devs kind of wised up and uh, made people really pay to win. All right, now the last thing I want to mention here is that the Solar Eclipse event does apparently seem to have an end date here. So it started on December 4th and it's supposed to go until January 25th. I'm gonna let you know right now, if this event ends on January 25th, I will be amazed. Don't you guys think it should stay in the game longer? I mean, not six months longer, but definitely for a couple of months. I also feel bad because I know the devs did a lot of work on this event and it would only last two months. But then again, I think two months is about how long events last in Roblox games. These first two nights were not that exciting, but I have a feeling that the last two nights and definitely the last one are gonna be pretty cool. They're gonna be a lot more like a normal game since they have so many more waves. I mean, you consider the fact that normal mode only has 30 waves. 20 really isn't that different. So out of all the events TDS has done, this is the one that should be in the game for a long time since it has so many different maps for us to play on. And again, I think the last night is gonna be the best night and that's the one everyone's gonna want to play over and over. It's probably gonna take about as much time to beat as the Frost Invasion map did since they both have 20 waves. In fact, I bet night 4 is gonna be a lot more like a traditional TDS event all on its own. Oh no, I just realized that this is the first event that I've been a part of that doesn't have a special crate with it. It looks like the devs just went ahead and put all the skins in the battle pass. So instead of giving us a special solar eclipse crate that we could open and get one of these skins out of at random, they actually actually decided which ones are more valuable and really made us work for it or made us pay for it in my case. So this should answer the question once and for all, which tower do the devs think is most important in this game? It's got to be the commander or maybe they just made her the rank 12 reward because it's a girl. Because look at this, you've got accelerator, ranger, minigunner. These are some of the most powerful towers in the game. So of course they would be at the higher ranks, but the commander? Nah, this is here just because it's a girl. <laughs> and then Eclipse Scout is at rank one. I actually actually really like the Eclipse Scout skin. I did see someone use the Eclipse Accelerator and that is definitely replacing my Mage Accelerator because it is freaking sweet looking with his yellow beam. All right, guys, that does it for my Battle Pass review. Go ahead and let me know what rank you are down in the comments below. Also, tell me what your favorite reward is. You already know mine is the Eclipse Commander. All right, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button with your forehead, hit the subscribe button with your big toe, and turn on notifications however you can so you don't miss any of my amazing upcoming content. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, be safe, and never forget what I always say. Meow. Yeah.